Hey guys, hope hope you're all doing well. Happy uh, happy Merry Christmas to all of you. Um, to anybody who is joining us, um, I am sitting here this morning with this afternoon. Wow, today has gone very quickly. Um, I'm sitting here this afternoon with this really cool Cyber Reliquary box from Torg Eternity um, that I'm going to open in a little bit. I'm going to wait a few minutes and give people some time to, uh, to filter in and take some plastic off of some of the other things that came with this box in the meantime. Um, but this is a really cool game. This uh, The premise of this game is that there are multiple realities bleeding into our Earth. And uh, the heroes of the game are the people who can manipulate reality to try and preserve our reality as we know it. Um, so it's kind of a really cool concept. Uh, it gives a lot of room for there to be different genres within the game. Um, so one of those genres that uh, all of this stuff is going to be from is the cyber papacy. And the cyber papacy is kind of near and dear to my heart because basically um, the cyber papacy has a, uh, a cyber pope as their overlord who created this reality and is responsible for everything having to do with it. Um, and he decided to uh, gamify religion so that your piety score gets you certain perks. Um, so there's a lot of things that I really like about this setting. I really like what it does with making religion actually a really dark and creepy concept. Um, you also have demons who are actual demons who uh, have bled over into core earth. Um, you have the cyber police. There are witches who have actual magical power that the uh, the cyber church does not like and uh, tries to hunt down. And uh, on top of that, you have Core Earth's real Catholic church basically calling the cyber pope an anti-pope and uh, resisting them as well. So it's not just religion is bad. It's that these guys are doing really bad things with religion in a really creepy way. Um, so um, I actually had the good fortune to meet the line developer for this game at Gen Con 2019. And uh, we had a really good conversation and they hired me to write an adventure for this box. So somewhere in this box is the adventure I wrote. Um, and then because of production, it was quite a while before the box actually got here after I wrote it. And so the box got here, life was busy. Uh, I put it on a shelf and then I moved to Alaska for a couple months and the box did not come with me. So the box has been sitting, waiting for a time when I had the time and energy to open it because I basically popped the top of this and uh, looked inside and went, ooh, this looks really cool. I should probably do a video of this. Um, so I have, uh, been waiting for a moment to have the time to unbox this and today seems as good a day as any. It is a nice, uh, quiet time in our house right now, despite the holiday. So, uh, I decided it's time to seize the moment and see what we have in here. Um, so in addition to this box itself, which is giant by the way, um, so in addition to the box itself. They also had two additional supplements from the Kickstarter that got shipped separately. So we'll come back to those in a little bit. I'm going to set those aside now that they are not in plastic. Um, and they do a box like this every time they release a supplement for, uh, for a new alternate reality that's bleeding into core earth. So part of why I wanted to go through it is because, um, I am also writing an adventure, wrote an adventure and submitted it for um, one of their new boxes that's coming up in a couple months. So I will probably be hyping that uh, in January once that is up and shareable. But in the meantime, like I said, this one, the Cyber Papacy is very near and dear to my heart. Um, so 
first of all, they have an amazing box design um, with the logo on the front. And then the sides of this box are all circuit pattern all the way around. So let's pop the lid and see what we got here. Cause there's a whole bunch of stuff beyond just the core books that came with this uh, because they did very well in their funding. So there's some packing material. We'll just get rid of that for the moment. All right, so inside we've got some cool stuff here. Um, we have a CD. This is the Unhallowed Data soundtrack. And if I recall correctly, it's been a few months since I looked at it, but I believe Unhallowed Data is uh, one of the adventures that's going to be in here underneath somewhere. So we'll see if we find that in a couple of minutes. But um, it contains 17 tracks of uh, background music for, for your adventure. So if you are running this adventure, I don't know if you can actually see that, but there is an entire list of ambiance that you can play to go along with your game. So that's pretty cool. Um, we also have some decks of cards. So we have a cyberware deck. So one of the things about the cyber deck is, or about the, uh, the cyber papacy, is that the cyber pope will totally hook you up if you are on his good side. Uh, he will get you really good internet um, via pretty much your brain. Um, and he will give you cybernetic upgrades to your body so you can be a badass. Um, so this is a deck of cards that it looks like is going to contain some items that you might be able to get as a player. Yeah, this says each card is an individual cybernetic item that Storm Knights may install with art and statistics printed for easy reference. There are 55 items. So just taking a quick look at some of these. Uh, it looks like a lot of these are going to be chips of one sort or another. We have a heretic chip uh, that you could install into your character. Um, Storm Knights are the, uh, the heroes of this system. They are the ones who are able to manipulate reality and therefore they are able to fight against the other realities that are bleeding into Core Earth. If you are not a Storm Knight and you cannot manipulate reality and uh, another reality bleeds into yours, you kind of just start getting converted into that local reality, which is part of what is really cool and creepy about this, uh, this game in general. Um, let's see, what else do we have here? So this one, the TSE Cyber Gunner, it looks like there's a little brain there, um, lets you remotely operate computer controlled vehicle mounted weapons, which sounds pretty nifty. The art on a lot of these is pretty cool. Got another brain. Uh, you've got some, uh, some optical upgrades here. Um, and let's see if there's anything else super cool in here. Ooh, we have an entire eyeball. If you want to just replace your whole eye. That one displays transmitted documents or video on your retina, which could be really fun to play with in a kind of cyberpunk setting. Um, there's upgrades for your ears. Pretty much every body part is covered in here. Um, you could have a synth voice there. So this is the, the first deck of cards that we opened from this box. Oh, and there's also, uh, it looks like there's some weapons and armor and stuff. We have a Trigon EMP shield. We've got a complete power fist. So there's a lot of stuff that uh, might not specifically, ooh, we got, we got some, some claws there. Uh, it's a lot of stuff that might not specifically just be brain upgrades for your characters, but might also be things that they could carry around as, uh, as other kinds of gear. So that was our cyberware deck. We also have a cyber papacy booster deck that was right under it. Um, and it says this booster deck adds specialized cards for the dreaded cyber papacy. 
A rethemed 40 card drama deck features unique special effects each round, all of them designed to accentuate the oppression and futurism of the realm. Um, all right, so let's see what we have in here. So these are going to be things that affect the, uh, the gameplay and uh, what's going on with the characters. Yes, brains. There's a whole lot of brains in the first deck. Let's see if I can get into the plastic. All right. All right, so we have a couple different uh, different things in here. We have some drama cards. We have some destiny cards. And then we have some Cosm cards. So let's start with our drama and see what we have here. Um, all right, so these look like they are mostly going to be uh, events that occur. We start off very fittingly in the beginning. Um, and these are these are things that would affect what's going on in the uh, in the game. So we have we have a card that is nod off that uh, means that if you are in the God net, which is the uh, the cyber popes interwebs, um, computers can be used as a skill instead of taunt in order to taunt your opponents. So it kind of changes the rules of the game. And that's a very core thing about this whole system. Um, that uh, the, the whole point is that as other realities are bleeding into core Earth, um, they change the laws of physics. So if you uh, are aware of that and you can change it back, that is significantly to your advantage. Um, this is a great card title. Are you paranoid enough? The answer is probably no if you're in the cyber papacy. Um, so that's that's what this is. The art on these is actually really gorgeous. Um, unfortunately, you're not going to be able to see it particularly well uh, over the over the webcam, but some really cool art on a, a lot of these. I highly suggest, if you are at all curious about this game, that you check out the art on their website because they did do a whole bunch of teasers um, for the game, and they shared a whole bunch of the art there. So if you uh, if you're curious about it at all. It looks really cool. It's very pretty. They have some great artists on board for this. Um, and uh, I highly recommend you check it out because I've been geeking out over the art and uh, I've been looking at it for like two years right now. So, so those are our drama cards. And then we have our destiny cards, which are things that kind of help you a little bit as a, uh, as a player. So like this top one is adrenaline. And you can see we have our Roman style soldier over here with his cyber shield running down the streets of probably France, because that's where the cyber papacy tends to be. Um, and uh, this lets you add to your uh, to your skill total when you play it. Um, this one looks like it has one of our demon buddies on it, maybe. So those are pretty cool. And then our last set of cards from this deck are our Cosm cards. And uh, these are more circumstance related things as well. So we have here, uh, we have the one true way with our cyber pope there. Um, and that says, play this card on any character who can invoke non-cyber papacy miracles. So if you can invoke miracles from somewhere else, um, then you could play this on that character. That character's invocations are disfavored for the rest of the scene. If she is a storm knight, she gains two possibilities. So that uh, messes with how another character could interact with the game. So that's kind of cool. Um, this is another uh, another really cool piece of art that I'm going to show you guys, if you can hopefully see it right there. So I really like this for the uh, the comparison of the, uh, ooh, there's a really cool tank. Um, I like the way that the art for the Cyber Papacy mixes the like tech future stuff with the very traditional 
um, you know, kind of French and Roman style architecture and setting and things like that. So that was our second booster deck that we got out of this box. So our next thing, we haven't even gotten to, uh, to books yet, but our next thing here is some Cyber Papsy possibility tokens. So uh, your Storm Knights, as they're going through, um, have a possibility rating. And I'm assuming that these are to help keep track of things like that. But let's pop this open and take a look. Because it does look like maybe there's going to be some art on these too. So let's see what these are. Let's see if I can figure out how to open this box. Good first step. This box may defeat me. We'll see. There we go. All right. So inside we have a sleeve of chips. And these do all have art on them. So as I said, the art for a lot of these is really cool and really does a great job of mixing um, modern and futuristic stuff. Here's our cyber pope again with, uh, with kind of traditional style, um, art is a very cyberpunk person with a pistol of some sort. This is probably our church police there. And, uh, and there's a lot of variety because we have, we have her as well. Um, so these are, uh, these are a cool addition to the game. I'm trying to see if there's anything else. Uh, here we go. We've got, we've got her very cyberpunk techie person. Oh, and One of the uh, quintessential pieces of art for uh, the Cyber Papsy is our our uh, nun from the uh, Cyber Papsy there. Um, the full art for her is on the website. It's really cool. Check it out. But that's what those are. So we'll get those tucked away. So they're not all over the table. And then we will see what is in the next level of this box, because there is definitely some more stuff in there. All right, so that's our top layer of the box. And the second layer looks like it's gonna be mostly books. So the first thing we have here is our GM screen. We're gonna get this popped open so we can see what this looks like. things in here that I will get to in a moment, hold it up inside, but the art on the outside is quite gorgeous. We have a uh, shootout of some sort going on here, and then that on the other side. Um, inside, let's see, we have a whole bunch of quick notes. We have uh, the piety achievement chart over here. As I said, the Cyber Pope gamified religion. So you get points for uh, your piety score, depending on how well you serve him. And uh, they start off with simple things like responding with amen and scoring five points. And then they go up to some crazy things like joining the church police that are uh, a much higher level. And um the the really cool part about that gamification of religion here is uh that the way the cyber pope set the whole thing up 
he set it up so that you don't necessarily know what the next achievement is after a certain point. You're just supposed to be a really good follower of cyber papacy, and then you will score more points. So it can get really dark and creepy if you have people trying to figure out what they need to do to up their piety score and just becoming absolute zealots about it because something might give them points, but they don't know for sure. So they're just going to try really hard. Um, and yeah, the art is definitely a huge draw for me on this too. I love what they did with a lot of this. Um, let's see. We have a little bit more because uh, with our with our GM screen folded in here, we came with some pre-gen characters. So let's see if we have any cool, uh, any particularly cool character art in here that I can show you guys. So I told you guys that uh, some people in the cyber papacy have actual magic. So we do have the white witch here who has some artwork down there who actually does have magic. Um, we have a resistance member. We have a renegade street beater who's got definitely some cyber upgrades there. Uh, this guy also, our rabble rouser, definitely has some, some metal arms and stuff. Um, we have a punk rocker. Here we go. We have a, a uh, cyberpunk knight templar with his cyber shield and sword. Um, let's see, there's a whole bunch of things here. So let me see if I can find something really cool for you guys. All right, we have a drone jockey who looks like she is mostly robot at this point. And here we go. This is the one I was trying to show you guys earlier. This is our cyber nun. She is uh, one of the quintessential pieces of art from, uh, from this expansion. And uh, one of my favorite things about this art is that there's so much detail in it. If you actually look, um, her gun actually has a little rosary on it. Um, so they did a very good job with attention to detail on a lot of this stuff. So those are our character sheets. Um, and that's really awesome because that's something that'll make it super easy to pick this up and play with people who have never played this before because this isn't a super widely known game. So that is very helpful. So that's our GM screen and I will put that over here out of the way. And we get to keep going deeper into the box because there are many more things in here. So we have we have reached the book zone. Uh, this next one is the book that the adventure I wrote is actually in. So as you can see, I have not yet popped the plastic on this. Um, I have seen the PDF version. But I have not looked at it in hard copy. So gonna pop this open and uh, let's see what it looks like. Let's see what kind of cool stuff they put in with our adventures. So on the cover here, we have a demon ransacking a library of some sort and uh, this poor person hiding. And um, each, each expansion they do has a series of Delphi missions, which are basically um, missions to send the Storm Knight characters on. There are nice little self-contained things, and most of them come with an explanation at the end as to like how you could build it into a bigger game. So they're great plot hooks and a really good way to pick up the game and try it out, especially with those pre-gen characters that we have. So let's see. Um, there are a lot of really cool things in here, but I am going to kind of skip ahead and see where the one I wrote is. So I had a lot of fun with this. Um, like I said, I really like the uh, setting in general. And then um, I actually drew upon a real world location in 
Spain um, as the setting for the adventure I wrote in here. So it's not a perfect replica. The, the map is not a perfect, perfect replica of the real place in real life, but the real place exists in real life and you can go get a virtual tour of it and see it in 360 degrees. Um, so if you ever happen to check this out, um, the one that I wrote is The Weight of All Things. And um, you can go look up the, uh, the actual place that is referenced in here and get cool views of it that you can use for your, um, for your game, if you so desire. So just going through the art in this, because a lot of the art on here I have not yet seen. But there we have a demon captioned, perhaps it is best to leave alone what lies in crypts, which is generally good advice. Um, let me see what else we have in here. All right, so that's pretty much the art for this. Uh, just flipping to the next page, we have a uh, beautiful picture of a guy going a little bit crazy from his cyber modifications. Um, so these are nice, short, little self-contained adventures that can be built off of for other things. So that's the uh, the Delphi Mission Cyber Papacy book. So moving on from that, the next thing we have is Unhallowed Data. So this is the larger adventure that came in this box. Um, I was not involved with creating this at all, but this is the one that has the CD that we started with as the uh, the soundtrack to go with your campaign. So they did a really good job of making this something that could be really immersive if you're playing this full campaign. So let's unwrap this and take a look through this. So first of all, right there on the cover, we have some sort of monster of some sort who has his own, uh, his own cyber modifications. And let's see. The caption on the back says, the Delphi Council has a chance to slip a team into the cyber papacy under the guise of special investigators for the Inquisition. But what happens when the cyber pope requests that the team look into rumors of demons and betrayal? Someone inside the church has sinister plans. Follow the clues through dark monasteries, mean urban sprawls, and even into the godnet to discover a secret more dangerous than the church itself. So that actually sounds like it could be a lot of fun. Um, I'm just going to take a quick look through here, see if there's any super cool art that I feel like I should share with you guys. Here we go. That's that's a pretty cool one. Even petty crimes can be risky inside the oppressive cyber papacy. Um, so there's a lot of really cool, they do a really good job with the flavor text in a lot of these. Um, there's some demons and stuff in here, but I don't want to spoil the adventure for anybody who might play it. So I'm not going to delve too much further into this um, because again, it looks like they did a fantastic job with this. It has the backup CD to make it all the more fun. Um, and so if you think you are interested in ever playing that game, I don't want to give you any spoilers. The next thing we have in here is the GM pack. So this has a couple things in it. I'm gonna pop the plastic on this. And we'll see what we have here. So we once again have that gorgeous cover art. And then we got some fun stuff in here. We have right on top a, uh, a bookmark of the Cyber Pope with some stats and useful references on the back. So that's very cool. This is going to be really nice. This looks like it's a map. Um, so this is a map of the, uh, the Cyber Papacy. So as you can, unfortunately, I don't know if I can get the whole thing on the thing. There we go. 
Um, so as you can see, a lot of it is we have France and Spain up here. And then in this version of the game, the cyber papacy has started to bleed into Brazil as well. Um, so that's a really cool player aid to show where um, it actually contains like real world cities on it. Um, you can't really see it underneath the, the purple from the camera, but um, that's a really cool thing to uh, help players kind of connect with the game and see where they are in reality. This looks like it's going to be another poster. This actually looks like it's going to be really cool art. Yeah, this is gorgeous. Oh, it's two-sided. Man, I wish I had a place to hang this up. And I wish I had a way to not have to choose between sides. Because on one side, we have our lovely demon boy from, uh, from the cover of Unhallowed Data. But then on the other side, we have a giant cyber pope uh, hologram and people in front of it uh, from the cyber papacy and a bunch of the uh, quintessential kind of character types that we see here. Um, looks like we have our cyber nun up there. So that is some really gorgeous art and a really cool addition to this box. Um, after that, we have a whole bunch of tokens. These are uh, a bunch of the um, basically NPCs, monsters that you could encounter. And it looks like one of them fell out. So I'll show you our little minor demon who popped out of the thing. Um, so those are actually really useful if you're going to be running this game. And it looks like uh, we have tokens for all of the player types on the second page as well. So that's really cool. So everybody can have their own little token that actually matches their character from those pre-gen characters. Um, and then there's just some quick, uh, quick reference sheets that these look like they're intended to give to players. Um, it's a Torg Eternity setting primer with some of the key terms and the situation. So especially if you're playing with people who aren't familiar with the setting, those would be super useful. And that is the end of our, oh, that's not the end of our GM pack. I thought it was, but we happen to have some additional, uh, additional cards here. I'm going to very carefully unwrap. Because these are once again, some of our monsters. We have a Cygoyle, um, and then on the back, it contains stats. So these are things that would be really good quick references if you were running the game. We have some hellhounds. Um, just as a really quick way to be able to uh, flip through, grab something, and know, know where to go with it. Um, let me see if there is... Uh... Anything else super, uh, super cool in here? We have Uriel. So a lot of the art on this is, again, they did a great job with the art. Um, and that's definitely a really cool add to the game pack if you're going to be, uh, if you're going to be running the game. All right. So now we are done with everything from our GM pack. But we're not done with the box yet. So there's a whole bunch of stuff in this box. I think when they did the crowdfund for this, the cost for the box was, um, I want to say it was 250 But uh, then they kept adding stuff to it as they got to stretch goals, which is why I have two additional books that were not in the box. Um, so they really went above and beyond with making sure that um, there was a lot of game value in this box. And I really love that they do that for this game. So we have yet another book. Um, and this is our Cyber Papacy book. And uh, it has a ribbon bookmark in it. So this is actually a pretty well put together book. Um, and the cover art is the same thing that was on that, that poster that I showed you guys a couple minutes ago. So that's cool. Um, so this is the source book that tells you all the deep, dark secrets 
of the cyber papacy, um, how religion works in Torg Eternity, uh, all of the things that you should know about, what the different regions of the world are doing. Um, they have a sidebar on neurodiverse and disabled storm knights. Uh, so they did a really good job with this book as well. Um, and this contains all of the things like the cyberware that your character might get uh, or might want to get. Um, contains some slang, there's a whole bunch of gear and uh, a little more on the, looks like there's a little bit more on the characters and things like that. Um, so this is a really well done book. Um, it's gorgeous. Once again, we have our cyber pope there doing cyber pope things. And uh, this is this was the core book of the uh, the cyber papacy expansion. So that is very nice. And then, like I said, there were two additional books that did not fit in the box um, when the box was mailed to me. So I've taken the time to take the plastic off of these already. But the first one is Heroes of the Possibility Wars, Volume One. Um, on the back, we have a little bit of an intro. Many are called to serve, but only the best answer. Heroes of the Possibility Wars presents a wondrous variety of characters and archetypes for Torg Eternity adventures and campaigns. The wars grind on across the cosms and continents, fought by willing and unwilling, zealots and idealists alike. Meet them, learn their stories, and feed them as grist into the grindstone of your adventures. Um, so this is going to be stats and backgrounds for various different characters that uh, your players might encounter. Um, and seems to be a pretty, pretty wide variety on this. So some of them are going to be specific to the cyber papacy, and some of them are things that you might find elsewhere, like Mr. Thomas Brownstone, who uh, looks to be on his way to go hunt something. He's a monster hunter. Um, we have an assassin. So there are uh, some quick reference things that you could pull out as a GM to um, add into your campaign or, you know, just kind of play around with. So that's very cool. And again, this is more than just what you would find in the cyber papacy. This does go on to include stuff that, uh, that you might find in other cosms, other realities that are bleeding into core earth. Um, but as far as cyber papacy stuff, we do have our renegade priest here who has at least a little bit of cyberware. Um, and his flavor quote, just for fun, is, it is not with my eye that I see the world as it truly is, but with my faith. Let's see if we have anybody else who is uh, cyber papacy specific, who catches my eye as I go through here. Um, basically, each, each two pages is a two-page spread of a new character. Um, so there's a whole bunch of characters in here. We have, all right, here is the Bike Templar. Um, it was also, it looks like a cyber papacy person, uh, though he is from Core Earth. And uh, his quote is, out on the road, we have to help each other out. So there's a whole bunch of stuff in here. Um, like I said, this actually would be really useful to be able to draw upon um, as a GM. So that is Heroes of the Possibility Wars, Volume 1. And then the last book that we have from this box that seems to kind of keep on giving, because I have now been unboxing this for a little over half an hour. Um, so this has been a fun adventure into all of the books from this, uh, is we have Relics of Power Redux. Um, Challenge yourself and your players with this new take on the quintessential original Relics of Power adventure trilogy brought back by popular demand. So this is a, a uh, so Torg Eternity was originally a game made, I believe in the 70s or 80s. It's, it's a much older game that has been picked up by Ulysses Spiel and is being remade um, so that it's, you know, it's modern, it's 
a little sleeker um, and it's going to appeal to, you know, modern gamers more. Um, so this appears to be an old adventure that they redid. Um, and this is another like long campaign adventure um, that is going to uh, cross many cosms, including the Nile Empire, the Cyber Papacy and Pan Pacifica. Um, so those are all places that you may hear me talk about more when I, uh, when I talk more about Torg Eternity in the future. But, uh, this says that it is a seven act adventure, um, set in the realities of all of the cosms invading earth. So as your players go through this, if you actually play this, you're going to get to experience all of the alternate realities bleeding into core earth. And I'm just going to take a quick look for art because we love us some pretty art. And we'll see what's in here. All right, so we have some, some nice maps that I'm not going to show you guys because, once again, I don't want to give any spoilers to anybody who might play this game. Um, and we have, uh, we have some cool part of a disaster of some sort there. The robot coming through a wall. Uh, and then by contrast, we have the beautiful, beautiful art right there, if you can see it, of Niagara Falls in the reality that is bleeding in there. So one of the really cool things about this is that basically if you play this adventure, your characters are going to be genre hopping. Um, and trying to blend into the different genres as they go, presumably, so that they don't get found out as storm knights and caught by the invading forces. So that could be a, a lot of fun to play. That's definitely a really cool thing to have. So that now is the end of our giant box of stuff. But just to go through everything that was here uh, one more time for anybody who came in late, we just did the Relics of Power Redux adventure. So we just looked at, um, which is, like I said, kind of genre hopping. We had the Heroes of the Possibility Wars volume one, which is a whole bunch of NPCs and other characters that your players might encounter. So that was cool. Um, we have the Cyber Papacy core book, which of course was the big deal for the Cyber Reliquary box. Um, because that was the basis of this, this entire cosm. Um, so that's really well done, um, really well put together. Uh, we have our GM pack here that had our uh, NPC cards. And then beyond that, we had setting primers that you could give to new players. We had a whole bunch of tokens for both players and um, other things that they might encounter. There's some, uh, there's some demons, there's some church police, there's a lot of cool stuff on there. We have a gorgeous art poster that I'm gonna have to figure out what I'm gonna do with because I don't know where I'm gonna hang this up or which side I'm gonna pick. Um, we had the map of the cyber papacy which would be a really cool guide to be able to show your players as they're going through the world. We have our cyber Pope bookmark with some stat stuff on the back for quick reference. Uh, so that was the GM pack. Beyond that, before we got to that, we had Unhollowed Data, which is another long form adventure. Um, and with that, we had the Unhollowed Data soundtrack so that you can play creepy music for your players while they are doing creepy things in the Cyber Papacy. Um, we had the Delphi missions for the Cyber Papacy, which are short, um, kind of easy to jump into adventures that can then be built off of for longer games. So there's a whole bunch. Um, let me tell you how many there are. There are... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, uh, 11. So there's 11 short adventures in here and then some stats and things like that that you can add to your games as well. So that was really cool. Um, and then we had our 
GM screen that we went through, which again came with a whole bunch of pre-gen characters wrapped up in there. So if you're playing it for somebody playing or running the game for people who haven't, um, you know, played it before and you don't want to worry about building characters, that's definitely a very nice thing to have. Um, and then beyond that, we had our possibility token pack, which has a whole bunch of the art from this expansion on the tokens. Um, those were really pretty, very well made. Um, and then we had our two decks of cards. So the one is cyberware and gear and stuff that characters might encounter. And the other deck is the Cyber Papacy Booster deck, which has cards that can affect how the game is played, what your characters can do, and things like that. So all in all, I am really excited about all of the very cool, shiny things that, uh, that came with this. And uh, like I said, I will likely be talking about this game more in the future because I am writing more for them. And I am... Uh, very excited to maybe run this at some point in the future because I have all kinds of shiny new stuff to play with. So um, again, if you haven't played this game before, it is Torg Eternity by Ulysses Spiel. Uh, you can check out their website. They are doing um, expansions of each of the different realities that can bleed into Core Earth. So there will be more to come in the future. And I believe the next... Um, crowdfunding for the next region begins in January. So like I said, you'll probably hear me talk about that a little bit more in the coming weeks. So anyway, thank you all for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed the unboxing. Um, I'm really excited to have finally gotten this unboxed and uh, I'll see you guys around. You all have a good day.